are we please talk about the British Grand Prix at Silverstone taking place this weekend? I am hyped for this race. I've just uh, I've finished watching the qualifying. Uh, it's it's going to be a fun race. I am so loving that the Formula One managed to get a season in because oh, I love it. It's 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 brilliant motorsport. It, it, in a lot of ways, it's the peak of motorsport. I know sometimes it's not like the most exciting race, but actually, that's a kind of common thing to say. But when you look at it, like, especially last season, we had some super exciting races, and it is. It's it's exciting stuff to watch. So I uh, I cannot wait for this race. Biggest news story, obviously, Sergio Perez. The the racing points this year. The the carbon copy of the Mercedes. I love that strategy. I love it. Drink. The Mercedes are so dominant last year that it's like, okay, if you if, if it's in the rules that you're allowed to copy their car, why not? Do you know what I mean? This, it clearly works. Look how well they're performing this season. It's brilliant. It's great to see the Pink Panthers like working their way up the grid. Do you know what I mean? It's, it just it, it adds a level of excitement to it. And Nico Hulkenberg is back because obviously Sergio Perez, uh, bless him, he, he tested positive for coronavirus. Um, I hope you know. Hope he gets well soon. The byproduct of that, it's hard for me to completely hate on it because, like, Nico Hulkenberg belongs in Formula One, right? Look at the bloke. Look at the guy. Look at the hair. He's, he's got great hair, you know? He's got, he, he's, he's a brilliant racing driver. He's got great hair. You know, he's, it's, it's brilliant. A guy like that, he, he represents something in all of us, do you know what I mean? Something to, like, to aspire to, do you know what I mean? He's, He's young, he's handsome, he, he, he lives in Monaco, do you know what I mean? He's, he's probably got more gorgeous women falling over him than you could literally shake a stick at, do you know what I mean? It's just, it's just, I bet, in my head, all he does all day is cruise around in some, like, luxurious, like, sports car, the convertible, with a babe in the side, just him and a babe, you know? And that's what we all want, that inspires something inside of us, it's like, yeah, you know? Couldn't that be me, you know, just me and a babe, you know? In a wonderful car, in a in a European like fancy setting, that that's what Nico Hulkenberg represents for all of us, and he belongs in Formula One. I'm just happy that he's he's played a part in this season, uh, albeit it's going to be a small one. It's only going to be a few races, but still, brilliant to see him back. And with that in mind, I'm actually going to be putting some bets on him because uh, yeah, why the hell not? Uh, one thing I did find really funny was <laughs> the reporters. God damn it, they try and get the racing drivers into trouble, don't they? They're always goading them with, like, questions. Like, literally, like, the reporter's basically, you know, <laughs> speaking to Magnussen after qualifying, because obviously they didn't get out of Q3, um, uh, Q1, rather. So, like, they, she's talking to him, she's like, uh, and the questions are more or less, like, well, um, well, uh, don't you think that the car is, is a piece of crap? Thoughts? Ah, uh, well, I think that everyone's working their hardest, and you know, so yes. But um, you trying to actually do anything like in these races is it not clutching the straws at this point? Your thoughts? Um, I think that the team are doing the best they can. It's so it's so funny because it's so obvious that she's just all they want is a soundbite to try and get these poor bastards in trouble with their with their race teams, and you know, they're going to lose millions of pounds on their contracts because they're just you know they're going to get they're going to get sacked for. Kind of slandering the team, but yeah, I oh know it's it's fun to watch. It amused me anyway. Um, looks like the clerk has found a little bit of pace, you know. Um, uh, Vettel bottled it again, obviously. Uh, well, it's, well, why do we expect anything less? You know, just, you know, I, I'm always ragging on Vettel, but you know what I mean? He's actually, he's, I mean, he's all right, but he's he's just a bottler, isn't he? Never mind. But yeah, the clerk. It looks like Ferrari need to be fast, man. Like, am I the only one that's really disappointed that? Ferrari are just, they've shit the bed, quite honestly, like, it just, it, they, they can't even, it's, it's not, like, it's not even a question, like, they're, they're probably not going to get a podium every week now, it's like, it's not like, uh, for, like, usually, Ferrari had a really good chance, and now they're just, yeah, they're, they're nowhere near, they need to, they need to do something next year, it's a travesty to watch that beautiful red machine go around in, like, you know, it, between positions 6 and 10, that's, it's just, it's not right, it's not right. They need to do something about that. But uh, Leclerc, he's uh, qualified fourth, so he's on the second row. Um, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, that's going to be interesting, especially with um, Verstappen sharing that second row with him. That's going to be a hell of a start. Those two love to fight each other. Uh, that, that's because that, that's some of the most interesting racing that we saw last season was between uh, Leclerc and Verstappen because those two had a real rivalry in go karts. 
So you know their their little bitterness, their back and forth, it goes back a long way. And you know, in history, and that's what we love. I've I've said it before. I'll say it again. People love a narrative. They don't love the sport. They want their story, which is why that um, Netflix show uh, Beyond the Grid or whatever it's called. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, but it's a Formula One Netflix show. It shows you like the kind of behind the scenes of all the drivers. Absolutely fantastic. Which is why it's so heartbreaking to see Alexander Albon struggling so much. See that flawless segue there? Flawless segue into Alexander Albon's business, abysmal performance uh, in qualifying. Yeah, he's just um, he's not he's not having the best of times with that car. I don't know what's wrong with it. But the thing is, the Stafford seems to have a, have these issues controlling it as well. Which is why one of my terrible bets on the Formula One this week is I don't think that both of the Red Bulls are going to get to the end of the race. I think that one of them is going to fail. They're both five and a half to one against. 5.50 for either Albon to get out of there, not classified, or for Max to get out of there. Ideally both, because I've put them on as separate bets, but that's like five and a half to one. Uh, I love, I love <laughs> betting on disaster. Do you know what I mean? In, in Formula One, it's fun to just to bet on someone to, to not finish, because it's such a negative bet, isn't it? You're not, bet, you're not rooting for someone to win, you're rooting, on, you're rooting for people to crash out. It, uh, it really plays to my to my sadistic nature, which is which is fun, and uh, yeah. So I mean, there's there's some pretty good odds on Leclerc getting a podium uh, because it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's just I mean, if if Max crashes out, I do th I think that it's likely going to be Stroll or maybe Lando Norris getting the podium, but I, d I don't think it'll be Leclerc because. That the Ferrari just doesn't have the pace at the moment. It just doesn't. And it's a crying shame, as I said earlier. But uh, Vettel, 10th. I mean, Lewis's pace is just ridiculous. There's no point in betting on either of them. There's no point in betting on the race winner because we already know it's going to be Lewis Hammond. It, it, that, that is happening. You know, and you know what? I admire the dominance, but I am looking forward to the regulation change. And I think they've pushed it back to 2022 now uh, so that maybe some of the other teams can catch up. But yeah, just seeing the change in pace of um, of, of racing point, the Pink Panthers and uh, yeah, and and McLaren, they're doing very well this year. Carlos Sainz might be a cheeky one to maybe get into into the top uh, into the top three if um, you know certain you know, anything can happen in these races. But you know, Lewis is going to win. <laughs> uh, the other my other my other bet. This week, it's because you know I'm just loving the fact that Nico Hülkenberg is back in racing. As I said, it is where he belongs. And for him to, I actually do have a bet on him to get on the podium. That's never going to happen. Uh, I put that bet on foolishly uh, before qualifying. Uh, obviously, Hülkenberg didn't have the best qualifying in the world, but uh, yeah, I only got five and a half to one as well, which those odds are fucking shit, and especially for something that is so astronomically like improbable to happen now at this point after qualifying. I think you can get 34 to 1 on him now, but I'm not going to double down because the reason it's 34 to 1 is because it it, it ain't going to happen. But I mean that that 5 and a half to 1 bet is still floating out there. I'm not, if I had a physical betting ticket, I'd have torn it up. I'd have torn it up by now. Boom, done. Do you know what I mean? But obviously it's all done online these days, isn't it? So it takes all the fun out of, you know, tear, you can't tear up a betting ticket anymore. But, yeah, so, my other bet, uh, Nico Hülkenberg, to get into the top six, is four to one. That's, that, that's worth a fiver, just for a bit of fun, just so that I can watch uh, how, you know, certain people are getting uh, going throughout the race, because, obviously, I don't think it's going to be much of a race to watch up front, because I think Hamilton's going to probably get an early lead. You never know, but it's, it's likely that Hamilton gets an early lead. The, the pace that that guy was on was just... Unbelievable, incredible. I think he's smashing lap, lap records all over the place. But, yeah, either way. Oh, it's going to be a fun race. Oh, I'm, really, I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, maybe we'll even get some rain. Who knows? Who doesn't love a bit of a bit of rain? But, yeah, uh, I'll be watching Hulkenberg very you know, very closely. Obviously, rooting on Albon and Max, uh, either of those ones to not finish or both of them to not finish. Uh, you know, negative as fuck, but who cares? And, uh, yeah, I'll do a quick recap of the race uh, tomorrow after we see how my bets are done but uh, until then keep those odds long and those bets terrible i'll catch you next time